Hi, my name is Pinky Gelani and you are watching What Women Want. We are in season four and this season's theme is superheroes. We're looking for the superhero within you. I'm so excited to talk to our guests this season because each one of them are doing superhero things within their community. Things, tasks, you name it. There are wonderful people who are going to be joining us all season long. Today I'm joined by Dr. Carol Chakua, who is a mom, a therapist, an author, a parenting coach, and serves on the national panel on parental empowerment and engagement that has been organized or set up by the Ministry of Education, am I right? Yes, you are yes. right. Nice Welcome, be... Carol. Thank you, Pinky. Thanks it's, for having me. It's yeah. so nice to finally meet you. Yes. We've, uh, through COVID, we've spoken on Zoom. Yeah. And, and now it's like. This is the first time we're meeting face to face. The first time. It's like Gosh. we know each other. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm like, oh, we haven't met face to face. We've before. never met face to face. Wow, look at that, COVID. I know. Yeah. I know. But isn't that fascinating that we, we've just picked up? Like, mm -hmm. we know each other. Yes, yeah. sure. Yeah. Amazing. Conscious parenting. I love this. I love the term. I think it's fascinating. I think it's fascinating. You're bringing it into Africa yeah. where maybe we're not so conscious mm -hmm. or maybe not so aware. Mm -hmm. Can you define it for me? Yes, and different people will define conscious parenting differently. So I'm giving you my own sure. developed version okay. of conscious parenting. It's really just being able to be aware of how you are showing up when you're interacting with your children, when you are uh, mothering, when you're uh, taking care of children, and just being able to ask yourself candid questions and give yourself authentic answers. I know. You know so what am I hard. feeling? How am I interpreting my child's behavior? How is that getting in the way? Some uh, children have the capacity to trigger us, Pinky. As a, as a mom, I know you know that. <laughs> and you know, we, 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 we have this, as parents, we're in this space where our children can swing us from one extreme where your heart is thudding with love, pumping with love, you know, you, you're like, I will protect this child, you know, F with everything that I have, you love your child. And then in a split of a second, they, <laughs> they like, swing you to the other, exactly to the other extreme and you're so angry, you know, and you find yourself maybe saying something or doing something that you later regret. And there's no other relationship, Pinky, that has the capability to swing us from one extreme to another as parenting. And so for us to be able to be conscious means being able to ask ourselves in this moment, when my child, I've just received a report that my child has not been doing homework for the last two weeks, yeah. for example, yeah. and I'm feeling this well of anger and, and frustration, how do I show up? What I do in that moment will determine whether this child will learn to do better, or will learn when mom is angry, it scares you guys. Yeah. So let me just shut down, let her run so that now she, and then now we move on. And I will still not do homework next week. So wow. conscious parenting is really just being able to be clear, and it's a process. It's not that it happens in the moment, it's a muscle that you build. The big term here is actually self-awareness. What am I feeling? How am I interpreting my child's behavior? And um, my biggest teacher in this space is Dr. Shefali mm -hmm. uh, Sabari, who has written a great book, The Conscious Parent. And I picked a phrase from her book, which I talk about like everywhere I go. Yes. And she says, unless you are fulfilled, you will use your children to complete you. Oh. It's, I'm, not, wow. I'm not done. <laughs> you oh, will it's teach. More. Yes, there's more. There's more. Oh, gosh. You, will, you will teach them how to live with your unacknowledged fears. So we have these fears we have not acknowledged. They are there, they're just boiling somewhere, okay? With your rejected emptiness. So, spaces in our lives over time where we've been rejected, even if it means when you were 10 years old and you were not part of the cool crowd and you were told, we don't want to be around you, you know, you felt rejected, you haven't processed it. And the third thing is forgotten lies. And that's the biggest one because forgotten lies are just experiences in our past that we haven't processed. Some of them were traumatizing. 
with the teachers we met, with parents who were doing their best with the skills they had or did not have. But somehow we interpreted them differently. They harmed us, you know, they wounded us one way or another. And what happens, Pinky, is that when these things only show up when we have children, because children act as mirrors for the things we haven't dealt with. And so a child behaves a certain way and boom, I mean, or even just a child comes home and they are crying because, oh, you know, my, uh, my friends don't want to be with me anymore. And um, you see, self-awareness or conscious parenting there means you being able to step back and listen to how you're feeling. Because how you're feeling could have a lot to do with your experiences when you were 10. And how you felt stuck and voiceless. So to support your child, support, you come with <laughs> 10 principles of using your voice in that moment. And that's overwhelming for the child. All she wanted was to vent. To vent. So be being self-aware and being conscious is being able to sit and listen and just connect with how you're feeling so that you can also learn from the moment and tell yourself, you know what, this child needs support and I have 10 years to support her to be able to process rejection. Therefore, I have time. But we don't do that. We, 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 we come, take it personally. We take it personally. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We and, think and like, it, oh my God, this is an attack on me. Exactly. Whether it's from a teacher or a friend yes. or a cousin. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's like, wait, yeah. This, is, this is an attack Yeah, on me. there's just that overwhelming need to protect our children. And, and a lot of it comes from our own unmet needs. So anyway, this is how the phrase ends because we are not oh, done. It's not yet over. <laughs> The, the last part, which is for me the biggest and the tragedy of it, is that we do all these things while unaware we are doing so. And so the work that I do with parents is to just bring to awareness these things so that we are clear. This is my fear and this is, this is real. This is me bringing my own issues. And it's a process, it's, it requires coaching, it requires therapy, it requires you really being open, uh, being humble enough to be like, okay, right now it's me coming in, so let me step back. And um, so that we bring to awareness those things, so that our children don't have to take in our own unmet issues, then they pass them to their children, and you know. So on, and so the forth, cycle. Yes. generations yes. and generations. Yeah. Speaking of which, what is the mother wound? Mother wound, yeah, it's again something that is being talked about a lot. And I, I would look at it as, you know, the, the, the experiences that we have had that as children, because we do not have the capacity to process, especially, not especially, the negative experiences. You know, our parents did what they did like I said, with the skills they had. Yes. So we're not going to sit here and start saying, I'm having, I have a mother wound because my mom was an evil woman and all no. that. No, yeah. they did what they did with the skills they had or they didn't have. But in the course of doing that, also doing their best, maybe they had, they had their own stresses, sort of they pass it down to the child. And because we don't have the capacity, uh, children don't have the capacity to process big emotions, to process traumatizing experiences, they suppress them okay and so they in turn again forgotten lies when they have children they now pass on those wounds so unless we are able to sit back and explore our past in a very safe space in a very open way without um, trying to defend what our parents because sometimes we, we don't even want to go there because we're like but my mom is such a wonderful amazing thing it's not about it's about the things that happened to you that violated you one way or another, exactly. you know, yeah. and, that and changed and you, that, that altered you. Exactly. Yes. And so we need to deal with that, okay, without placing blame on anyone, but saying a violation mm -hmm. happened. Yeah. So we do carry those things, you know, and, and sometimes we, we, we actually know that we, we may not have been raised, you know, uh, right. Then we swear, you know, like, I will never do yell at my child. my child. I will never <laughs> do this to my child. And you try your best. But under pressure, you know, you can only squeeze out what you soaked mm. in. 
Okay, so for me that's, that's, that's my interpretation of uh, a mother wound, the things that we soaked in that are negative, that are traumatizing, that broke us one way or another. And we need to be able to go back there. In my sessions, we, we, I tell them we need to open the wound. You know, there's a scape. Yeah, yeah. We need to open. Yeah. It's ugly, it's messy, it's painful, but it's only that then that, that yeah. we can be able now to begin the process of cleaning out the wound and the process of healing it so that our children experience as whole and it's possible, you know, for us to experience as whole and healthy, not 100% whole and healthy, but just giving yourself and opening yourself up to the process of growing, of healing, of using this intense moment with our children as opportunities for our own growth. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time we, we, we are using those opportunities to teach our children less, uh, lessons. You yeah. know, they have to learn this <laughs> lesson. They have to be responsible. They have to learn that the world, that life is hard. How about using those moments for me to learn more about myself, about why I reacted the way I did? How about using that moment to remember that this child, the, the, the frontal lobe, you know, the part of yes. the brain that is, is responsible for logical thinking, for decision making, is not fully developed. And so when I see something in my child that has embarrassed me, for example, I consider it as misbehavior, how about I take a moment and say, oh, he needs a lesson in kindness, not what is wrong with you? Mm. How can you treat your brother yeah. or your sister like that? But just being able to look at it from a whole, wholesome, whole child perspective. You're making me feel like I need to run home and <laughs> oh. redo, redo my mother. Okay, <laughs> just, just take a deep breath in. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> yeah. what, what is an empowered mother, an empowered wife, and an empowered daughter? What, what do they look like? Um, empowered, and, and I think empowered, uh, sometimes the word empowered, we, we, we interpret it differently. In my opinion, an empowered mother, wife, daughter is one who is self-aware. Because even empowerment has to be an inside-out job. It cannot be an outside-in job. So uh, how do they look like? They, they are... Um, they are conscious, you know, they are aware of how they are showing up, they are aware of how they are interpreting uh, other people's behaviors. They are more self-compassionate, okay? For me, just being able to notice that, oh my goodness, I yelled, and what am I going to do about it? Two things, either I'll beat myself up and say, look, you yeah. did it again, <laughs> or self-compassion, you know, and say, you know what? Yeah, I was sort of caught there. I mean, mm. you know, I, I wasn't, this was unexpected. Or I was tired, or I'm having stress, a stressful day at work. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take a deep breath in and out, and I'm going to forgive myself. And I'm going to tell myself, I will do it over. Like our children, and they're so forgiving, you know, they give us opportunities to do over, over and yes. over and over. And we need to also learn to give ourselves opportunity to do over and over. So for me, empowerment has a lot to do with um, how you're treating yourself, you know, kindness to yourself, opening yourself, recalibrating every moment, you know, opening yourself to growing. Um, then when that happens, then these other spaces of empowerment come naturally because you're feeling confident. Mm. You can use your voice, you know, you're feeling confident. You're not beating yourself up. You're not, your parenting is not guilt laden, okay? Yes, or your relationships course, yeah. are not guilt laden. You're like, you know what? I can forgive myself. I can grow. These are the lessons I'm taking out of this moment. And I'm going to give myself another opportunity to do it. So that's how I see empowerment. It has a lot, again, to do with <laughs> being conscious. Wow. Yeah. Why is motherhood so important? <sighs> you know, um, <laughs> and you know, motherhood here would be not necessarily even just giving birth, just being able to nurture other yes. people, you know, uh, to mentor other yes. people. I think for me, uh, let me speak from my own experience as a mom, and also someone who has worked with parents, that it's given me an opportunity to grow. Okay. Okay. So I am always, I have learned to again, focus on myself and ask myself, 
what do I need to learn from this mm -hmm. moment? Uh, motherhood and mothering gives us an opportunity to pass on something to others. Yes. And just watching them grow and blossom becomes such a source of fulfillment for us. The more reason why we really need to work on ourselves and to heal ourselves. Because if we do that, then motherhood really... Uh, the goals are, are achieved, the yes. goals of nurturing and growing other people and bringing them up in a way that, that is wholesome. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I never thought that you would answer it like that. And, and like you said, motherhood is just, you don't have to be a mother mm -hmm. to nurture. Mm -mm. You don't have to be. Even a teacher who is working with children or a social worker yeah. in a children's home who's never had children. Yes. That's mothering, yes, that's absolutely. nurturing. A supervisor, you know, working with people working under you, you know, the nurturing is, is, is really, true. yeah. And being able to recognize as exactly. well when people are struggling. Exa exactly, very true. Yeah. Mm. What are the most difficult things as women that we must overcome in order to live a mentally fit life? Yeah, the things we have to overcome. I think number one is our own selves. I work I work with a lot of moms, okay? Uh, out of 10 parents that I work with, two or three are dads and the rest are moms. <laughs> the rest are moms. <laughs> and one of the things that stands out for me, it's the noise in our head. Okay, the noise, the noise in our head has a lot to do with guilt and fear. Fear that my child will not turn out okay. Fear that my child will get into drugs or have multiple sexual partners mm -hmm. or, or, you know, whatever. Just fears that are valid. Now we have coronavirus mm -hmm. to worry about. Kidnappers, um, you know, fear that my son will not be motivated enough or will just get lost down that rabbit hole of screens, you know. And so there's a lot of noise uh, in our heads, fear, guilt, guilt that I haven't done enough. Maybe I let my children get away with too much when they were young. So here I am, she's 12, she's 14, she's 16, and she, the word we use is they're growing horns. Yeah. <laughs> So maybe I should have cut yeah. those horns earlier, you know. So a lot of um, inner dialogue, inner critic, a lot of voices in our heads telling us we are not good enough, we are failing or we have failed, it is too late, um, I'm not doing enough. Am I doing enough? Am I doing too much? Am I ruining my children either by being too easy on them or too hard on them? Like we are forever, constantly. I mean, we're just never happy human beings. Exactly. <laughs> Second guessing Constantly, us. yeah. Yes. So I think to be mentally fit, you really need to, to, to clear that clutter. Mm. You really need to identify that clutter and see it for what it is. Uh, a lot of negativity. You know, by nature, humans, we are, we have a, we, what we call a negativity bias. Yes. So we are biased towards looking at what is going wrong, which is good, especially during the caveman times, because mm -hmm. it would help you to yeah. prepare, exactly. you know, for the, worst. for the worst, and then gather what you need to do to fight the lion, you know, yes. <laughs> and the lion was real then. That's how we are wired. We are wired for negativity. And we still have that in us now. It's just that a lot of the lions in our lives are not real. Mm -hmm. They are imagined. And so we need then to begin to build the muscle of being positive. It's, it's not easy. It's Work. like going against the grain. Yes. yes. And so even just helping parents coaching them into moving from that negativity bias and you know it's different from just saying let's speak positive you know <laughs> let's just be positive let's all be happy mm -hmm. you know no it's identifying that identifying the fear the guilt for what it is but then being able to begin to look what resources do i have as yeah. a woman and we have amazing resources we have so much capability we don't see so for me to be mentally fit is to first identify those negative spaces, the voices in your head, and then begin to, 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 to release them, okay? And to begin to do, for example, like the serenity prayer, you know, what do I have control over? Yes. 
I need courage for the things that I need to yeah. do something about. But I also need wisdom <laughs> to, to, know know. The, to know the difference. <laughs> to know the difference. Yeah. yeah. So again, to be mentally fit means to just tear, to put apart, pick apart yeah. those spaces, and also to draw where we know we have strengths and resources and use them. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So what? What are the three things that maybe we can do to be better parents? Yeah, three. Uh. Can I give you 20? <laughs> <laughs> to Your be better parents. Three. Yeah, I know, I know. I top know. three, top I, I three. wonder, yeah. yeah. Is it, hard? <laughs> it must be very difficult it is. to narrow it down. It, it is difficult to narrow it down, and it's different for different people because we okay. struggle with different yes. things. That's another thing. We are different people. Yes. That's what we yeah. have to understand exactly, here. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So even the things we are talking about here, some people resonate with them deeply and others are like, oh, nah, mm. that's not my thing, mm. that's not mm. my space. And I hope you're saying that because, not because you're in denial, mm. but because yeah. you're actually working on yes, it, you know. Yeah. But let me just say one, uh, the question was top three things to, to be, be better to be better parents. Yeah. Bottom line, of course, self-awareness. Okay? okay, just being really able to look at the areas you need to work on, you need to heal from. Number two really is learning that, realizing and recognizing that everything we, we desire for our children flow out of a healthy relationship. So giving yourself up into that space of cultivating, and cultivating, you know, is a process. Mm. Cultivating an environment where a healthy relationship is there between you and your son and your daughter and the people that you're parenting with. Just making sure that environment is healthy, which of course will start with you, <laughs> your inner environment yes. being healthy. Because everything we desire, we want our children to be resilient. Yes. We want our children to be kind and respectful, mm. to be in meaningful relationships, to have a purpose in life. Whatever it is they do is purposeful, not just successful, but yes. you know, purposeful. And research tells us all that flows out of a healthy relationship so if we are not focusing on relationship and we're just fo focusing on grades on well-mannered kids on our children making us look good mm. you know then we're just fixing things at on the top, on on the the surface, top. Yeah. but but the relationship has to work and that's why sometimes when i'm working with parents with 16 year olds who just look like they have grown homes and mm. they don't know what to do with them i tell them you know what you have to stop everything take a step back and begin working on the relationship. Yeah. It's the longer route, but eventually it's the shorter route. Wow. Yeah. One so more tip. One more tip. <laughs> okay. Number three is for parents to really be able to understand their children and their, unique, uh, their uniqueness of their children. Just understanding your child, yeah. understanding your child as a unique human being and looking at them as for an who they individual. are, as an individual, not a mini me, and not exactly, or yeah. no, not trying to fix them, either as a mini you, or the one you wished you were at their age. Okay, oh. so what I tell parents is, uh, grieve for the child you thought you had, grieve because that child is not there. Interact with the child in front of you. They have weaknesses. They talk loudly or they are too shy. <laughs> it's like you're just talking about my kids. <laughs> yeah. I'm always like, don't talk so loud. <laughs> accept them first, just accept them for who mm. they are. Because when you do that, then you begin to accept yourself for the kind of parent you are supposed to be for them. Because if you don't, you need to grieve. We need to go through the stages of denial. This is not my child. No, this is somebody else's child. Anger, how could you do that? Bargaining, maybe if I did this, mm -hmm. you know, they would change. Then the, there are five stages. Yeah. You know, depression, oh my goodness, this is who I have, <laughs> what you have guys. I created? <laughs> what have I created? And then acceptance. <sighs> okay, so let's work with what yeah. we have. And that is very liberating because you get creative. When you release, you get creative. Mm. You decide to come alongside the child as opposed to coming at them, you know, yeah. from here. Yeah. So yes, I, I think I've saved more than three. I don't awesome. know. <laughs> Thank you so much, Carol. Yeah. Do you sing to yourself? Do I sing to myself? 
I see. I've not uh, thought about to the, yourself. To yourself. To myself. Yeah. But I sing. Yeah. Yes. Can you I give sing. us a sample? <laughs> a sample of a song. <laughs> you can say no. <laughs> yeah. Let me pass. <laughs> Have you ever started a rumor? You know, a lot of people are watching. <laughs> pass. <laughs> What makes you nervous? Being put on the spot. <laughs> I'm not spontaneous. I like predictability. I like to be prepared. And so when you put me on the spot, <laughs> like you're doing now, thank you. <laughs> what was your last dream about? I know it was work related. <laughs> oh wow, really? Yes, you it was work you related. Dream about your work. Yeah, it was work related. I just don't have the specifics. No problem. Yeah. As long as you were making lots of money. <laughs> no. Okay. I was actually stuck with a client. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know how to go about oh, it. Oh interesting. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you typically have for breakfast? I have fruits. Cut up mango and bananas with my hot water lemon honey okay yes that's your breakfast that is my morning meal wow yes all right so yeah. i'm now going to ask you about the superhero in you the superhero in me yeah don't worry okay. it's not difficult at all it's all okay. about you because we're celebrating superheroes okay. in season four right. um do you have what it takes to stand when others don't or won't to, yes I do. I do. Does it take courage to ask yourself hard questions? It does. And I am finding myself asking myself a lot of hard questions lately. And it's very uncomfortable. It's a very uncomfortable space. If you could give yourself a superhero name, what would it be? I have no name for a superhero. <laughs> the only thing I, one I can think of is Superwoman. <laughs> oh, we'll take that. <laughs> okay. Do you think it is our responsibility to be heroes? Yes. First of all, a hero to yourself. Like, you know, the, you should be your biggest champion. Uh, you should be your biggest cheerleader. And I think when you're able to, to do that for yourself, then it flows out to others. So on What Women Want, we want to have a little bit of fun. We're going to do our action game because, you know, superheroes are full of action. And we're going to throw this to Carol. <laughs> She's going to read a word okay. that's going to show up on the screen. Um, Olive is holding it over there. I don't know what the word is. She's going to act it out. You can't say anything. And let's see how good your acting skills are. Let's go. Yay. Yay. Turban. Head, head scarf, beard, helmet. I am yeah, helmet. 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 <laughs> Gloves. Oh, that was easy. That was easy. <laughs> Hammer. Did you have these answers before? <laughs> That's too easy, Ollie. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. Big. Vast universe, world, world domination, global superpowers, <laughs> energy. <laughs> I have no idea how to do this. Okay. You were so close. Oh, I'm not supposed to do this. Yeah, it's okay. Um, um, I don't know. Move on to the next. <laughs> Close, close. Social distance. Distance. You don't like me. <laughs> Shield, force field. <laughs> I don't know. Next one. No, I don't say it. Not yet. Okay. She, um, uh, um, um, this thing, this thing, <laughs> what's it called? I know what you mean. The thing you put here, right? The thing, the sh what's it called? <laughs> A shield. Um, mm, <laughs> armor. <laughs> Yay, are we done with, with the other two? 
Huh? Or the other two? What was no, this? No, it's one, I think. It's is the there, one, is there one more left? Space. Oh, so this is space. So I tell you to give me space. Because mm. <laughs> I couldn't know. I couldn't get it that way. Space. Space. Oh, yeah. So it was only one? It was only one, yeah. You did well. Well done. Well done. Well done to you. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so also, good yeah, you're very, very good. And those are very, very easy. <laughs> Dr. Carol has a book that she'd like to give away to somebody who's watching today. Tell us how we win it. How we win it. Yeah. So you've listened to, you've watched and you've listened to this. And this book is called Parenting with Your Heart in Mind. How are you showing up? So it's, very, it's a very self-reflective book. But thinking about what we have just talked about today, mm -hmm. I want you to share with us. I guess they will share in comments or something. Sure, in the comments okay. below. Yeah. Three things that you are becoming as a result of being a conscious parent. Who are you becoming? Ah. And then you'll figure out who wins, I guess. Absolutely. All right, we and will. then this book is for you. So as What Women Want is brought to you by SBM Bank, we ask our guests to pull a money card because we do want to talk a little bit about money. So Carol, I'm going to ask you to pull a card. It's got a question in it so we can get to know you better. Number and then two. there is a question about money. Okay. I'll read it. Oh, yeah. you'll read it. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So it's what can you talk about for hours without getting tired? Oh my gosh, parenting. <laughs> I think we know that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like that's pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. and I, yeah, just that's easy. Parenting. Okay, let's talk about money. Hmm. What is a valuable lesson on money management that you can share with us? I think that um, many of us, and that's something I'm growing into, have had a very um, tumultuous, stormy relationship with money. Right. Yeah. And, and, and therefore we need to, again, like for me, it's about self-awareness. <laughs> Why does money trigger feelings of fear and yeah. anxiety? Sometimes, I, I mean, I've, ha I've been in spaces where I do have a lot, I do have money, but I'm still worrying about money, exactly. you know? Yeah. And, and it has more to do with my relationship and my core beliefs about money, that maybe I just need a lot of it for me so to I'll be, be okay. happy. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And so I think for me, it's a valuable lesson to just explore my own beliefs about money. Um, where did I get them? Where did I learn that? Um, specific events so that I'm able to release those spaces and just have a healthy relationship with money. And also not pass it down to your children. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Because I Correct. know like for me in my childhood, money was the root of all evil uh -huh. or money didn't grow on trees. Mm. Those two things, mm. you know, I, I resonate with that. I don't know who said it in mm. my childhood, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I know yeah. that that's something that I, I grew up with. Yeah. So yeah. again, just healing that relationship with yeah. money so mm -hmm. you can so our kids can have good relationships as well. Yeah, and, and just be liberated in that space yeah. and, and not feel the need to hold, you know, mm. and learn the, the, the art of giving and being generous. Because again, when you're open, that's really when you're when able you receive. to receive. Yeah. 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 Carol, thank you so much. This was fun. It's been <laughs> such a pleasure. I can't believe it's the first time. That <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so bad. We need to go get a glass we of wine. We <laughs> do. We do. This was really nice. Thank, thank you, you, Carol. Remember, all you need to do is dial star 544 star four zero hashtag and select what women want to enjoy 200 MB of YouTube data bundle at only 20 shillings courtesy of Safari Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you again next week. Bye.